Hey guys, this is RDC Rob, and I've had a few people asking me how do I get my motive power for this little 15 ton switcher and this little fair this uh, Fairmount inspired speeder. My this is a little HO scale wood speeder, kind of a rustic old thing. I uh, built that to fit on a Gandy Dancer chassis, which is this right here. These are some other ones I'm working on, uh, different designs for speeders. This one's got a rack. I wanna try and put two, two strobe lights up here, flashing lights, and then have three headlights and two tail lights on there. This one has two headlights. Uh, the tail lights are just painted in and then I want to put a strobe on there. And this one that I have, which I'll show you in a little bit, this is just got a strobe on the top. And I just painted the lights on the front and back of that. <clears throat> so I want to help people to get from this to this. Though this is not completely finished, you can see the the pumping mechanism. Let's look at the Gandhi Dancer instructions here. So here's the instructions for the Gandhi Dancer. What we need to remove from this complete mechanism is we need to take both these guys off. We need to take this pumping handles off says crank right side frame with crank we want to take the crank off the right side and this uh, is like a uh, cam sh a cam or a piston kind of thing that runs off of one of these gears inside here and this goes up and down and that's what makes the crank go up and down to make the guys go up and down let's open the box so I can show you what you'll need to do to prepare a Gandhi Dancer for your own shell that you might want to create yourself. Here's our Gandhi Dancer. The box is a little torn up. These things usually come with torn up boxes. Evidently it was $6.97 at a place called Murphy's who knows how long ago. Most of these when I get them they are actually in very good running condition. Very rarely do I have trouble with them. One time somebody took it apart and they messed up a few things on it. But we got it. I got it to go. Okay, so here we go. Here's our basic candy dancer. And I don't have a power pack with me because I am not at home. I am on the road. I'm actually out of town, just not really on the road. But let's, uh, let me, I'll use this 9 volt battery as a power source. And we'll see if we can get this thing to run back and forth. Come on, I can feel it. Um, looks like this one guy's loose, so maybe the crank is interfering with it functioning properly. Let's get those people off there. And show you how this is done. So first off, looking at the bottom of it, you'll see where these guys fit in here. There's a little hook right here that their legs connect to. So you want to push that in either direction, like so. Now I'll get his legs off. Go the other side. So that way that whoop got his legs off whoa and the one guy already flew off there see that little hook there well that's where let's see if I can get the camera to focus that's where that little thing on his hand fits in and that's how you get the pumping action when the when the handles go up and down so take that off so this is basically where this unit right here is now. What we have to do next is remove the crank and you look closely you can see right there this is a little piston uh, 
or lifter or whatever you call that that goes down and connects inside here you can see the little metal right there so we need to get that off there let me show you the best way there this whole thing is held together by just two screws we've got let's get this camera to focus come on camera focus there we got one screw here we have another screw here so when you take these screws out the whole thing will basically come apart on you so and don't lose the screws so I got that screw whoops and there goes my my idle wheel and this is the geared wheel that'll come off so we need to remove this right here and this crank arm so this little pin holds the crank arm I'm using a very tiny flathead screwdriver. Squeeze that in there. Press this up. There we go. So I took that off. This pin here. Little pin here is what holds this, held this onto that, that frame. And now we have to get that out of there. What we need is this little pin here has to be pushed through. Oh, there we go. So you can see the pin came out the other side. You gotta hold all these gears together. You gotta wiggle this off. Okay, there we go. Got the whole gear out. This tiny gear has to go back in and back on that piece. So we got that pulled out. Need to slip this gear back in. Push this pin back in place. I think I got it. Do I have it? Let's see. There goes my tool. Got the pin back in place. And you see our motor here. Now these, these pieces right here, these make contact with the side plates. And the side plates pick up the power off the wheels. These pick up their electricity off these side plates like that. Something I want to check here is how this how this front wheel fits, or this, this wheel here. This wheel has quite a bit of, quite a bit of play in here. I usually don't like that. And what I have done in the past, I will take a piece of tubular styrene and I will make slightly longer piece than this so that this is more more rigid and it seems to make when I when I spread those wheels out a little bit seems to make it uh, tighter in the uh, track 
and I don't want it too tight, but it makes it tighter than all that play there, and that helps to have a better running vehicle with this motive power. So let's uh, put it back together. You'll see that this side plate here lines up with that there. But you have to put your wheel in place. When that's in place, it, it kind of holds all this snug inside there. So here's our gear side. All right, so we got those two together. Then this, and you can see the, the little notch there. It's in that notch that the end of this will slide in. So you gotta line up the two axles. And that little notch and the floor plate for Handy Dancer. Hold all that together like that. And you put that on loose. Go to the other side. And put this screw in. Okay, that's in tight. Get rid of those pieces. Now you're not gonna make that too tight. You see that little bit of wiggle there? You still want that because if you just tighten it up and it's out of kink, then this will rock on the track. So you want to have this on your track. Make sure your track is a nice, stable surface. When it's on the track is when you tighten up your screws. Okay, there's that side. Okay. okay. So see all that play in there? I don't like having all that play. That's why I mentioned I will spread I will spread that out. This here has some play. This here seems to have a lot more play, so you could probably extend that just maybe one millimeter and get a slightly tighter finish in there. But, so let's test this out. Go the other direction. See how it does that little twist? With a widening that axle in the back would help solve that problem. So anyway, so that will help you create a mode of power for your locomotive. Now something I do want to mention is that for this kit here, I'm drawing a blank on what kind of kit this was. I'll look it up. I'm thinking this was a Jordan Highway Miniatures. What that said you needed to do was, it said you needed to break off these hammers shovels and hammers. Now the problem with taking these tools off and taking your two guys off is you end up reducing the weight. So this did not have, this uh, little um, 15 ton switcher did not have the power it needed to barely get around my track. My track did have a 2% grade on it. It made it, but it kind of had to get up to speed. What I ended up doing is on this particular switcher, which I'm still tweaking the details on it, was I cut some extra space in this cavity and I added some weights in here. I believe they were from a Pinewood Derby car kit. I had to cut them down on a bandsaw because they were too long. But I put some weights in the front and the back and I added these couplers instead of using the uh, static ones 
So I put function couplers and this thing now, it's got a little, it's got some weight to it for sure. But this thing will pull a box car around my layout. So that's how I get a Gandy Dancer to this point for making my speeders that I've been building. These are 3D printed. This is one of the raw ones you can see by the front of it. It's got warped, but we've improved the printing process since this was made. So we're going to try and make more of those available. And I'm trying to make a various colors. I hope this video helps you take a Bachman Gandhi dancer and make it a mode of power for your small HO or ON30 locomotives or speeders. And yes, I did make a ON30 speeder with one of these. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe to see more videos as they come out.